Good morning everyone. My name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel Carla Being Crafty where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I like to do and a little bit of life thrown in. This is my uh, 64th floss tube video and today is Sunday October 4th so we are well into uh, fall technically um, the weather here in Southern California has not been cooperating it's been extremely hot this week over 100 it's supposed to be in the 90s today and for the next week and then I think like on Thursday and Friday maybe next week it's gonna pop down to like the high 70s so I'm looking forward to that of course it's gonna come back up because that's how it is here <laughs> but um, I have done my best to encourage fall weather. I got this orange blouse um, that was delivered last week. And so probably on the hottest day of the week, I wore this with some tweed pants that had an orange stripe in it. And my orange flats. And I was like feeling very fall. And it was still hot and sweaty as all get out. Um, but, you know, you do what you can do. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I would like to um, welcome anybody who is new. If you like what you see, then please like and subscribe. Uh, if you don't like what you see, then go find somebody that you do like. Um, there is no need to actually tell me what you don't like. Um, I've been doing this. I said this is my 64th video. It's really not likely that somebody sending me a nasty message is going to change my mind on what I do and what I believe. Um, so as you can probably guess from me saying that last week, I did get my very first sort of negative comment. Um, it was very politely worded. However, it was, in my opinion, kind of nasty. And they said that I have so much to offer as far as crafting. And then I got on that political box. Well, you know what? This is my channel. And I have the right on my channel to say whatever I want. And you guys as viewers, of course, have the right to not watch. Um, however, there's enough of you out there now who are super supportive of me and send me wonderful messages and really uplift me that I have to believe that I'm doing something right. You know, there's enough people who are telling me that that I have to believe it. Um, and if you don't like it, if you don't like me mentioning, I mean, I've done 64 videos and I think I've said something political in maybe three of them. Um, but if you don't like me saying that Black Lives Matter, then you don't have to watch me. And you certainly don't have to leave a nasty comment telling me why me saying that um, makes me wrong. Because I don't believe it anyway. Um, I'm not going to change how I feel because somebody writes sort of a nasty message on my channel. So. That being said, I will climb off the soapbox and just say that I'm really not going to change the way I do things. I can't not be me. I can't uh, do an entire video during a week that is hurting me emotionally because of the political climate and not mention it. Um, it's not a political channel. I'm not going to go into long political discords. Uh, but, you know, that's me. And I have to believe that that over a thousand subscribers later, that there's enough people who either A, agree with me, or B, like how I present things enough to agree to disagree. Um, okay, so, um, aside from that last week, um, my video, maybe you may have noticed, went up really late. And the reason for that, I did the video early in the morning like I normally do. Um, I have never had so much trouble uploading a video in the entire year and a half, year and a quarter that I've been doing it. Um, just for those of you who don't know, I record my videos on my iPhone. And then um, usually I do it all in one clip and I don't have to end up splicing anything together. Um, so when I'm done, then I, on my phone, upload the video to YouTube and then I move over to my Chromebook and I edit, you know, the, the description box and stuff like that. Um, and usually the uploading to YouTube process takes, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, I've had a couple times where it kind of hung up and I had to like restart it, um, it, you know, maybe a handful of times. Um, 
Last Sunday, it took seven hours for me to upload the video. It just wouldn't do it. And the thing is, is I have to kind of babysit my phone because if my phone goes into sleep mode, um, it, it stops everything and it doesn't get back on track. So it's like every time the screen kind of goes, uh, you know, I don't know if, whoever has an iPhone, I don't know if everybody's phone works like this, but my screen will kind of go dim before it goes out and goes into sleep mode. So when it hits that dim, I have to like tap it to like make sure it doesn't fall asleep, right? So I had to babysit the phone for the entire seven hours, so I couldn't do anything else really. Um, yeah, so it was that was kind of frustrating. And I'm sorry for anybody who, there's a couple people who are worried about me. Um, it's really nice to know that I have you guys out there. Like if I don't post a video someday because you know, I was attacked by my cat in my apartment and I'm lying here bleeding. Somebody's going to like notice that I didn't post a video. So it's nice to know that. I'm, it's like a, a Bridget Jones reference that she's attacked by uh, Alstations, I think she said. And, uh, you know, and dies alone. But um, it's nice to know that there are people out there who are keeping track of me and who care. Um, but for those of you that were worried because of it, rest assured, I personally was fine, but I don't know why. I don't know if it was a problem with my phone or my internet or if it was a problem with YouTube, but I just had the hardest time um, last week uploading. So hopefully that won't happen this week, that I will get it up um, easily. And you guys will know because if you're if it's popping up on your on your video feeds, you know, before noonish uh, my time, then you know it went smoothly. If it's not coming until afternoon, evening, you know I was struggling with it. So hopefully that won't happen. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, last week. Uh, was another slightly difficult week. I don't want to come on here and be complaining all the time, but um, my uncle passed away last week. I hadn't seen him in many years, but he was one of my my favorite guys. And he was my mother's brother. Um, so that was a little bit difficult because when I found out, I actually found out through a Facebook post. Uh, one of my cousins posted something, and I called my brother, and he and I tried to call my mom um, together, like, you know, uh, video conferencing kind of thing, not video, uh, phone conferencing, um, to kind of tell her to gather, and she wasn't answering her phone, because it was probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock, my mom goes, you know, she's kind of down for the count fairly early, um, so I went ahead and called the next day, the next morning, and again, she wasn't answering her phone, so I called, um, like the nurse's station, where she lives and I'm like can somebody like go to her because I'm gonna tell her some sad news and I don't know how she's gonna react and if she's very upset then I wanted somebody with her so I had to tell my mom that her brother passed away and she was you know she was of course upset but she didn't it, she wasn't overly overly upset um, he was in his 90s he had lived a really full wonderful life um, the last couple years his health and his mental acuity had been declining, so she really hadn't talked to him in a couple years. She had talked to his um, his life partner, and she um, she kind of kept my mom informed about what was going on with my uncle. But the last couple years, she hadn't been able to talk to him because he just wasn't mentally there. Mm -hmm. So she kind of had done her mourning already, um, you know. But that being said, of course. You know, it's always hard to, to lose somebody important. And when I talked to her, she was like, you know, she's like, oh, that's sad. She goes, I, I started missing him already. She goes, but I'll probably have a good cry today. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's fine, Mom. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to tell her that was not a fun thing this week. And I had a couple days at work that were just really just I don't know just frustrating I guess is the right word um, I also I went in on Monday and got my flu shot but I also got some blood work done that has been neglected for I'll be honest a couple years um, when my husband left me I kind of my health care stuff has got pushed to the side and um, so my doctor has 
obviously been contacting me like every month going, you need to come in, you need to come in, you need to get the lab work done. And I finally did it and then I got a notification that my A1Cs were way too high. So now that's a big hubbaloo and, um, and so that was upsetting me. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm fine. I'll get it all taken care of. I'll get, you know, whatever needs to get done, done, um, to get my health on track the way it should be. But, you know, it just, it was kind of like a bummer of a week in those kind of personal things. So all that being said, I didn't do a lot of stitching. I just didn't feel like it. And I just, you know, I was kind of, I did things to make me get out of that mood. Um, I read, which um, was necessary. I, I got on the phone with my friends and talked for a long time in the evening. Um, so it just it didn't leave a lot of room for stitching in the evening. Um, I didn't. I did. I didn't stitch every day like I normally do. So I don't have a ton of stuff to show you, but. That's okay. Um, you know me. Next week I'll probably have like 20 whips instead of like three. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm looking forward. Hopefully this coming week will be better, more relaxing, more, just more mentally smooth and, um, less like bumps in the road. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm fine and, uh, no need to worry about me or anything like that. It's just, you know, it was just a tough week. We all have them. So, um, I do want to give a big, like, happy birthday shout out to my nephew Hudson. Uh, Tuesday the 6th is his birthday. He's going to be a big six-year-old. Um, I went over to visit with my family, um, yesterday. It was fun. And I brought Hudson, the little ghost uh, ornament hanging thing that um, I had made and he did love it he was just like oh. and you know it's so funny you know when little kids use big words especially you know when they use big words naturally and um, one of his favorites is actually he says actually all the time and he'll be like actually and then whatever he wants to say um, but I gave him the thing and he said it was gorgeous that was the word he used it was so cute um, and, um, when I got there, my brother was running an errand when he got back. The first thing Hudson was like, daddy, you have to hang this on my wall. So, you know, Aaron got his little nail out, nail and hammer and hung it all over his bed. So, um, and he was very excited about the glow in the dark aspect. Although we kept telling him you need to charge it. And, um, my sister actually got some kind of like a black light charging flashlight kind of thing. So, um, they're going to have to do that so that at night it glows. Um, but, so that was fun. And then I diamond painted with my my niece yesterday for quite a while. Um, so that was fun in the crafty world. And then we played D&D &D last night again. Um, but anyway, so that was my, my fun Saturday to help me like recharge and, you know, be around the people that made me happy. Oh, and we had a Zoom call with my mom. So we got to see my mom, um, you know, not in real life, but we got to see her and we haven't seen her for months. So that was nice, and um, the, the technology was a little bit, like, confusing for her. Like, she didn't quite get what, how it was being done and all that kind of stuff. But, and I think she was a little bit more fascinated with looking at herself than looking at us. But, you know, that's what happens sometimes with the, some of the older generation when they are confronted with technology and they're not uh, used to but it was really nice we talked to her for about an hour and she got to see all the kids and you know and all of us and um yeah so she got to have like a little bit of you know one-on-one -on -one talking time with uh with everybody and it was great so um that was a fun thing to do and I think that we're planning on doing it like maybe once a month now um until the pandemic is over and we can actually see her in real life again okay so let me get on to the actual stuff I worked on this week again not a ton um, I did work on my diamond painting um, I'm finding I'm, I'm tending to do this on Sundays after my video and then I'll, I'll pull down the paper and you know that much and do that and um, but I do I need to get get this done so I can get it on my on my door 
Um, so I'm pretty close, pretty close to finishing. So that's always a cutie. Okay. Um, as usual, when I go over to my brother's, I'm bringing more simple projects to work on. And I did bring Fire Burn last night by uh, Ink Circles. Um, I didn't work on it very much. Again, as I said, I was doing diamond painting, and I just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in the stitchy place this week. But I did fill in a little bit more. Um, I think I finished this little goblin. Uh, yeah, this one. The other thing I found, when, one thing that's nice about bringing what I'm considering my simple projects, which are basically projects that are on 14 count Ada with one color or two colors of thread. Um, <laughs> when I'm stitching over my brothers, because I'm talking and, you know, I tend to have more um, errors that need to be, you know, pulled out. And it's usually not a ton. It's just, you know, I'll like get somewhere and something doesn't match up or something and I'll be like, okay, where's the mistake? And then I have to put out, pull out like 10 or 20 stitches and redo them. So it's kind of better to use these simple patterns for that because it's not that hard to unstitch the stitches. Um, usually I can just pull them out and, and then continue. I don't have to actually cut threads or anything like that. I don't know, do you think I'm going to get this done by Halloween this year? I don't know. If I don't, then it's going to probably go in um, into the uh, hibernation mode, and then I'll pull it out again next summer. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start a different ink circle so that it's not quite so Halloween-y. So that was one of the three things that I worked on this week. Which I guess for some people three is a lot, but for me I usually have like six or seven projects that I work on in a week. Um, not this week. Um, I did some more on the Crosswing Collection. This is actually called First Encounter, but in my head I'm just calling it Chickadees. Um, and I'm doing this as a gift for my friend Tracy. And it was funny because she knows about it and, and I was talking to her this week and I kind of showed her what I had done and she's like, I know that, you know, there's no rush on getting it done and I know it might take a while and everything. And, um, cause she was telling me like she had the perfect place for it. And so, you know, so that place is being held for it. And I was like, you know, actually I realized that this is a pretty small pattern and I might have it done by the holidays. And then I'm like, oh God, should I say that? But I'm like... But no, but no, uh, no guarantees, no guarantees. She's like, I know. So, um, I got basically one, one bird tummy completed. And these, I don't think I had done these leaves last week. I'm not sure. But. So, it's coming along. It's funny because I moved up into here because I wanted some other colors other than the browns and tans. I... I, those colors, of course, are necessary in life. I just, they're not my favorite to stitch, browns and tans. So I wanted to get some more colors. So I went over into the green. I actually thought I was going to get into the berries and then realized that there's no berries at the top of the branch. The berries are all underneath the branch. But, um, but I actually, this is fun to stitch. It's easy, you know, relaxing little stitch. I like stitching on something that I know is for somebody that I love. So, um, so yeah, I'm enjoying that one, and I think I will be able to get it done fairly quickly, you know. No promises, of course. And then, um, th this is actually what I stitched on most this week. Um, for whatever reason, I was finding this stitch extremely um, comforting, and it's Jardin Privé Sampler au Shaw. And, you know, I started this for Sampler September, but I really, really like it. Um, I'm liking the style of stitching of it, I guess. I like that I'm doing it on a 20 count Ada, which is the first time I've ever used a 20 count Ada, which I also really like. And I'm stitching it with um, Sulky Threads, which the Sulky and the 20 count Ada, I think I've said it before, is just like this great combo for me. It's just, um, I don't know, I just really like it. It's, it, you know, I'm not getting 
tangles like you get with other flosses and um, I like that it's the one strand but not as thin as like one strand of um, of DMC or, or silk or something um, I'm just really enjoying this combo and um, so much so that um, I put in an order um, at one two three stitch this week during one of the days that I was just just killing me um, emotionally and I was like I need something I need I need something and um, I remembered that I had a gift card from my wonderful friend Dawn from uh, Arizona that she for my one year you know floss tube anniversary she sent me a gift card to one two three stitch that I had been holding on to for something and this week was the something so um, what I decided to order it, and of course I'll show it to you when I get it but probably that won't be till next week or the week after right um, I ordered a long dog sampler that I think was new in 2019 it's called Pavain Pavain for these times um, I know everybody's starting pandemic um, sort of as a balm for all of the craziness that 2020 has has thrown our way um, and I did get pandemic but I like this chart I just like this chart better I guess or I don't know it speaks to me I love the the sentiment that's written on it um, which I'll show you when I get it but anyway so I ordered the chart and then I thought I kind of wanted to do it just the way I'm doing the sampler of shot I wanted to do it on a 20 count Ada and I wanted to do it with um, sulky so um, and I wanted to do it um, the, the thread that I'm using on Pavane is kind of like purples and pinks and stuff, which are gorgeous. Um, I wanted something different, so I, I got more of the Peacock Plume, which is um, one of the ones that I, I've shown you already that it's kind of like a blue-green um, blendable. So then once it comes in, then I'll be able to pick my uh, <clears throat> accent color or colors. Um, because there are a few little animals on this, and for whatever reason, I like stitching animals not in a blendable. I like them to be a solid color, and I like having a little pop of uh, accent colors. So when I get all that, I will show it to you. I got a white opalescent 20 count Ada, and I also got a like a, a blue, like a medium blue. Um, so whichever one looks better is what I'll use. Anyway, so all that, and I haven't shown you sample or shot yet. So, I got, oops, hold on. I got quite a bit done. Um, the letters, this, this whole row of letters, this whole row was finished, and then this whole section. Um, and I had told everybody before, so of course this is a sampler, it has a bunch of alphabets that have, you know, this alphabet, that alphabet, um, and then there's this one. But what I decided to do is I decided to use this alphabet down here. Instead of actually doing the alphabet, I used the, the letter style, of course. Um, that was where um, I did my personalization. So I have Carlos Baggy. Baggy is my black cat, for those of you who are new. Um, and then I this actually ended up being like one stitch longer than how it's charted. Um, but it's fine. I just, this mouse is like then one stitch over. And then this little, um, design, it came to a peak, a one stitch peak, and I just made it a two stitch peak, um, which works fine. And then I put 2020 and there's still room for one more row, um, to fit into the area that that was originally charted. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm either going to do two mice down here or maybe some hearts or maybe two mice and a heart in the middle something like that okay oh and then I started this cat this like scratchy cat so I worked on this like maybe three times this week and I just I was really enjoying it it just um, was very soothing stitching and I and I liked putting in Carlos baggy um, my cat is he's, he's appeared on here a couple times he's huge black beast and he is the sweetest animal he just is he just really is and he he's pretty independent as cats are most of the time but at night when I lay down he's there for the cuddles and he really he makes me feel loved 
Um, sometimes it's not so fun because he also knows like when I put on my shoes that I'm leaving and then he gets extremely cute and cuddly and like not wanting me to leave. That makes it hard in the morning, but anyway, so I kind of like that I'm doing this as a as an homage to my to my baby baggie. So um, that is it as far as my whips this week, you guys. Um, oh, I hope that it's still fun for you to watch when I don't have as many. Um, but we'll see. We'll get back into it. I got to keep working on that diamond painting. And so I have a couple other things I want to set up this week. Um, uh, one thing that I'm actually super excited about. Um, so my nephew Hudson, uh, not Hudson, Hudson's the six-year-old. He's having his birthday this week. Uh, Logan is the older one. He is 12 going on 13. He'll be 13 in September. And he is really and truly an amazing artist. Um, and he did this painting, gosh, I don't even know when, he went five or six years old. Um, he did this watercolor that um, was hanging in their bathroom in the other house. And every time I went in there, I would look at it and I'm like, I want to do that as a cross stitch. So I taught, and I asked my my sister-in-law and, and Logan about it, and they were like, I don't care. Um, but it just, like, never happened for them to get me a copy. And then when I was over yesterday, they were actually hanging up all the artwork. And so when they pulled it out, Stacy was like, oh, yeah, we need to scan this and print it for Carla. So it's, it's not, this is not a great copy because it's scanned, and then I had them print it on, um, uh, graph paper for me. Um, but they'll give you an idea, and I just, I love this. I just think it's so beautiful, and again, you can't really see it that great because some of the colors get really light, but I had um, them printed on graph paper, and I think I'm going to make this graph paper like nine squares to a square on here, and then I'm going to try and chart this on Stitch Fiddle, um, and I'm really excited about that. I think that it's going to be just beautiful. And then, of course, I want to stitch it. And, you know, we'll see. If it turns out really cute, it might be a pattern that maybe I could sell. And, and Logan and I could maybe determine, like, if we want to, um, you know, give the proceeds or part of the proceeds to a charity of his choice or something like that. So I'm going to chart this, but I am not the artist. Logan Abrams is the artist. And this gorgeous little rainbow zebra, I think, is going to be um, a project for me very soon. Well, actually, I'm going to start the Stitch Fiddle thing today, and we'll see how hard that is to do. Um, my brother said it reminds him of Fruit Stripe Gum, which I don't know if that tells our age or not, because I totally understand what he's talking about. But So I'm excited about this zebra. I really am. Um, okay, I don't really have haul this week. Um, I did get my little package of, uh, Star of David scatter or whatever. Um, they're not that big, but I mean, this is what I'm going to use in December, partly for my, my, uh, seasonal tree. So that's really all I got. Um, you know, I have an order from 123stitch that's outstanding. So when I get that, I will show you guys. I also had an email from a viewer um, who wishes to remain anonymous and she's going to send me a diamond painting. She ended up getting the same diamond painting twice somehow. Um, she got one in square and one in round and she's going to send me the round which is great. Um, and it's like a really pretty still life. So I'm either going to keep it and do it or I might do a giveaway. Um, I know this is, you know, mostly a cross stitch channel so most of the people who watch me enjoy cross stitch but is there anybody out there who would want a diamond painting um, if I did a giveaway? Um, I'm just not sure what what the desire is out there. So let me know. Um, and I might decide to give that away if um, if there's enough response. Um, although it is really pretty. So <laughs> I, might be, I might be selfish and want to keep it. But maybe not. So anyway, let me know. Um, I really think that that's about it today. This is going to be a lot shorter than my normal videos, but you know, I've explained that all to you guys and, um, yeah, so, um, I hope you have a great week. Um, I did find out, I thought it was going to be a secret thing, but apparently they announced it. So the next yum box that I get is 
going to be Russia. So the stuff that's coming looks like really, really interesting um, and kind of like a big variety of between the savory and the sweet and there's like some chocolate stuff and so um, yeah, I am excited about that. Um, so that will be towards the end of the month and I'll go ahead and do a second um, tasting video because that was so fun to do and a lot of you guys really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I am going to continue on with my uh, homage to fall trying to get the weather yeah I, I guess I think that if I uh, if I make things fall enough around here that um, I will get the cool weather that I desire um, I don't know if you guys did you see my my Halloween nails I'm gonna have Halloween nails all, all month I got a couple different sets they all glow in the dark um, so <laughs> see I'm like really in the fall mode um, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope everybody can stay in a healthy and happy and calm mindset, including me. And um, again, I do appreciate you guys out there, the ones who send me messages, the ones who don't send me messages, because I know that like, if you watch on your TV, it's really hard to send messages. So I, I get that. Um, but, but those of you who do take the time to reach out to me and tell me, that you liked my video or that there was something that was helpful or something that was fun. I really, really appreciate that so much. And, um, I, you know, I've enjoyed doing floss tube so much for the past year, year and a quarter. Um, and it's because of the wonderful response that I've gotten. So I won't let the one bad apple from last week ruin my experience. And, um, and I thank you all so much for, for all of your kindness. So, um, on that note, for the next week, please, until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.